We've made it now to week four in the season as number four Baker prepares to take on Graceland on the road this Saturday at 6 p.m. here with Coach Grossner. Uh, Coach, a, a strong performance, uh, a win at William Penn on Saturday. Um, recap that 41-7 win for us. Yeah, you know, first road trip as far as uh, overnight, early morning game. Uh, so there were a lot of factors. We, half our team had never traveled with us. So we brought 63 and 32 of them had never traveled in a Baker uniform. So there was a lot of ap apprehension. How are they going to react, get them to bed, uh, know how to act, all of the above. It was a super trip. Um, got over 30, 40 mile an hour win. Uh, they're an option team, so they loved it. But uh, our kids came out real workmanlike. I thought we played as our best game of the year. Um, the second week when we played Culver, we couldn't get an evaluation. We got such a big lead that uh, I couldn't evaluate whether our team got better, and that's where you make improvement from game one to two. But in game three, we, we played in all three phases as good as we can. Now we gave up a kick return, but we'll make adjustments there. Um, and then, you know, I got some nice uh, email back from the hotel. Uh, there was a softball team staying there, girls softball 12 and under. And the lady had been all over the country with these traveling teams. And uh, she was an administrator at a college. and. She took the time out to write a letter back to our administration about how our kids carried themselves, uh, opened doors for them, talked to them, uh, encouraged them in their weekend tournament. And so I thought that was really cool because you don't get that enough, uh, that feedback. And so I let our team know that's how you act, that's how you represent our university and our program. So overall, that weekend was perfect. Uh, came out pretty injury free. We're going to get a couple kids back hopefully this week that are a big part of what we do. And so after week three, I'm very pleased with this football team. Yeah, let's talk about that one position at, at DN specifically. We've had some, some tough luck um, from the preseason into this season, um, and that's the spot you'll get a couple guys back. Let's talk about who will be back this week. Yeah, we were in fall camp down to our eighth guy since the spring at the DN position. And so, you know, from a recruiting standpoint, we thought we had all the answers and those answers kept falling off. And um, the, the good and the, the shining light in this whole deal is we did recruit for that position. Um, and we've had two guys step up and play well that we brought in. Uh, in fact, Jackson uh, was our uh, player of the week one week uh, against Culver. And then Jacob Thomas, our starter to start the year, had a, a bum ankle, and he's been out, and he's now back full speed. Um, but the, the guy that started this domino effect the wrong way, uh, Adam Novak, our senior defensive end, had a, a, a bad injury in the offseason. He is back, and he's practicing, and we're going to give him a few snaps this weekend and get him going again. And so in all this adversity that we've had, we've found a couple players that we brought in that can play at a high level for us, and we're getting back two returning starters in the same position. Uh, so go from real thin to, to now deep at that position, so we feel like we're improving there. A couple of news uh, notes this week. Team moves up to number four in the poll. Uh, Logan Bertel makes history with three straight Hart Offensive Player of the Week awards. Um, and you and I also saw he's broken the record for most passing attempts without an interception, and that's an active streak right now. So, um, you know, talk about Logan and in the way he's been playing to start the year. Yeah, three in a row, I mean, the hat trick, I don't think it's been done since, for sure, when I've been here, I haven't seen a young man get three in a row for a, a Hart Conference uh, Player of the Week honor. Uh, and he's so humble. I mean, I don't even announce it anymore. You know, it was big the first week, and we just roll with it. And I, I kid him that, that he hadn't played perfect yet and needs to play perfect to get the National Player of the Week. <clears throat> but, you know, what he's done with the football and distributed to our playmakers, and then he's made plays with his feet and his arm. Uh, he, he's, he's, a, he's a fantastic football player. Um, what in, in that sense, what it's brought to our team, it's brought a, a sense of our leader 
um, you know, prepares as hard as anybody every week. And then when we get out there, we're not making mistakes. Now that we're, you know, it, it can't go as planned all the time, but uh, the young man has thrown a hundred and what was it, 28 consecutive passes? 26. 26. Hopefully he gets to 128 without an interception. But the old record was Mac Brown with 98. And I hope this continues uh, into the thousands. Uh, that means we're going to be winning some football games. We take great pride in turnover margin. Uh, you know, we've been the top dog in the nation three different years in turnover margin for a team. And right now, I think we're sitting at plus 11, you know, right around that area. And if we continue that trend, we're, win we're going to be winning a lot of football games. Now let's shift to Graceland, um, you know, team that also entering week four. What have you seen on tape so far from them? Typical Graceland team, real athletic, skill-wise. Um, offensively, I think they've got as good as you want outside at the receiver position in about four to five positions. Uh, two to three tailbacks that can run the football. A quarterback that's dangerous. I think uh, he's, he's as good as anybody on a run. Uh, he's shown a, a tendency to throw the ball up, and our secondary hopefully will take advantage of that. Um, up front, I think that they've, they've been struggling a little bit, and so hopefully our uh, defensive line can put some pressure on them and, and make their quarterback uh, make some poor decisions. Defensively, I like the front three and four. Um, Linebacker-wise, they've got some experience there. They've got two secondary guys back that, that started last year. Uh, you know, they can run. Uh, they'll be able to run with our guys. We're going to have to be smart and protect Logan and, and uh, distribute the football like we've been doing. Um, you know, the, I think the key to this game is, is going to go, we're on the road, so don't make the mistakes and try to get on top and, and control the football game. Well, Coach, thank you for your time. Good luck Saturday at 6 p.m. at Graceland. Thank you.